Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum and I'm here today at RIA with a pair of Nicholas Noel Boutte embellished single shot little compact percussion pistols. Now, these didn't start off as percussion guns, they started off as flintlock guns, manufactured about 1803. And they were manufactured in the Manufacture des Hommes de Versailles, the Versailles Arms Factory, which is something that was set up in 1793 in part of the Versailles facility. Versailles is this massive complex uh, that was built by the kings of France. Uh, in particular, the arms manufacturing there was in a building called the Grand Commun, the Great Commune, sort of. Um, it was basically a, an accessory building, you know, a mere 67,000 square feet and six stories tall, to house a lot of the extra uh, the, the extra people and the extra work uh, that there wasn't space for in the rest of the palace. So they just, you know, built this extra little side building to do that. Well, in 1793, during the French Revolution, or after the French Revolution, uh, they turned a part of that building into an arms factory. And during the Revolution it was actually used to make uh, effectively military arms as well as decorative arms. When Napoleon came to power he changed that a bit and had it set up to solely produce decorative firearms, or decorative weapons. They did swords and sabers as well. Napoleon liked giving out um, fancy embellished weapons as status symbols, as, as honorary items for people who were particularly heroic in battle, or did other things that were worthy of, of note to the government. So instead of handing out something like a little medal, Napoleon liked giving people arms. Kind of cool. Uh, now, the Versailles factory, when it was originally set up, uh, in fact before it, before it actually opened it was announced that it would be created and that Nicolas Noël Boutet would be its director artiste, uh, artist director. Uh, he had been born the son of one of Louis XVI's gunmakers, he had married the daughter of another of Louis XVI's gunmakers, and he kind of was in this really good position of he, he got his job both through nepotism uh, by being you know, the son of and son-in-law of two other people who held the job, and also being extremely good at his work. Boutet is one of the most renowned uh, firearms artists, really, in history. And he would run the Versailles factory until 1818 when it shut down. At that point he moved to Paris and reopened his own commercial work. But I am getting ahead of myself because you can't see these at all, and you really can't appreciate them without seeing them up close. We have a very, very compact, efficient little box here for these guys. There is a lock on the outside, and upon opening you have a pair of pocket pistols and a couple tools. So a combination tool here that is a bullet mold, so you would pour lead into that, hold it shut, pour lead in, let it solidify. You then have a clipper here to cut off the sprue so you have a nice round ball, and you have a wrench for taking the barrel off the pistols, the barrels off the pistols, because that's how they're loaded. Now each one of these is basically a little kind of traditional style box lock single shot pocket pistol. And there is a pair of them. These are not dated, but they were manufactured about 1803, and of course uh, that means that they were not originally percussion guns. They would have originally been flintlock guns, uh, which were updated later on to percussion systems, possibly by Boutet, possibly not, we don't know. Frankly, it's the stocks and the locks of these guns that are particularly amazing. So let's take a closer look at those. The level of detail in this engraving is just really remarkable. Uh, we have some Greek figurines here on the, the triggers. These, by the way, have folding triggers, so when I cock the hammer the trigger drops down. There's also a sliding safety button there. The stock is made from a couple of different types of wood. We have boxwood here over ebony and I believe walnut uh, for the, the base material. And this is just really amazing work here. Uh, the Sphinx was a pretty popular uh, icon in French decorative arts during Napoleon's period. 
1798, Napoleon had an expedition to Egypt that garnered a lot of attention and really uh, helped propel an interest in, in really the, the old world, uh, an interest in both Greek and Roman and Egyptian history in France uh, around the turn of the century. And so we'll see you know, the Cadacious and uh, a number of Greek and Egyptian um, elements in this decorative work. Just the, man, the level, level of detail here is remarkable. So the two pistols have similar but not identical elements on them. You can see we have the, the same animal but in, uh, in slightly different poses on the two. Same thing on the back strap, you know, to Caduceus, 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 I'm probably mispronouncing that, but uh, not identical. Like you saw, we've got the rooster on this side. We've got another uh, Greek figure standing on an urn on the trigger here. And then this one has a, a Greek, I don't know, pan, something like that, uh, figure on the side. It's amazing for how small this is, how fine the engraving is. And that's, that's the sort of thing that Boutte was known for. These are signed on the barrels here. This is Boutte, directeur artiste and also marked on the top of the lock, uh, Manufacturer Versailles. Now I doubt these pistols got fired much, if at all, because of their, their artistic quality. Um, however, in terms of functionality, the way this would work is you actually load it by taking the barrel off. And so that's why there is this lug on the bottom of the barrel, and this wrench with a notch for the lug. So you can unscrew the barrel, and you would then put your powder charge in there, and seat the ball right there, and then instead of having to ram the ball in, you would just screw the barrel down on top of it. That seats it uh, nice and firmly in the base of the barrel, and then it's ready to fire. It just really is extraordinary work there. angry Jägermeister dog. It's worth pointing out that after Boutet, after 1818, when he moved to Paris, he continued to sign his work Boutet à Versailles because it's a much more impressive name, it's got the royal connotation, it just sounds better. It's a really cool thing that someone who is in that position actually had the skill to execute the job really well, and these are truly gorgeously manufactured guns. It's kind of crazy to think that, that these things are more than 200 years old. Hopefully you guys enjoyed a chance to take a look at them. Thanks for watching.